Today I'm gonna show you how to play Bloodborne on PC with the Shed PS4 emulator, now with the updated settings. With the recent updates, the game is now more stable on the emulator. For example, I just finished it at 1080p 60fps now and had no crashes. So I'm updating the tutorial while also including more details for the setup process. If you're planning on buying on Amazon, please use my affiliate link below in the description. Any product on the website will count and you will be directly supporting the channel. Before anything else, I want to show you the minimal system requirements for this emulator. But for Bloodborne specifically, the recommended settings are a GPU with at least 8GB of video memory and 16GB of RAM memory. I have a RTX 3070, which has 8GB of video memory. And like I said, I could finish the game at 1080p 60fps with no crashes. But with the settings that I'll show you, even if you have a weaker GPU, you're gonna be able to tweak the settings so you can make the game playable on your PC. Now let's start by downloading the emulator itself. We're gonna get the nightly version of it and the link for this page will be on the description of this video. This tutorial will be for Windows PC. In this case, you're gonna locate the one here that says Win64QT and then you're gonna click on the link that is next to it to download the emulator. And you're gonna download this and put it on the desktop of your PC. Next, we're gonna get Visual C++. This is also required for the emulator. And I'm gonna put this link on the description of the video as well. So you're gonna download this and you're also going to put this on the desktop of your PC. Lastly, we're gonna get 7-zip to extract the emulator file. But if you are on Windows 11, you can use the extracting tool from there just fine or any other extracting software you might have. But for 7-zip, you're just gonna click here on the download button and put this on the desktop along with the other files. Now on your desktop, you should have the files with you and we're gonna start by installing VC++, this file right here. So go ahead and double click on this file and this window will show up for you. And there is a chance that you already have this installed on your PC. If that's the case, you're gonna see a message around here that says modify installation. If that's the case, you can close this window and proceed with the installation. But if you don't have it, you're gonna see the one like I have in here. In that case, you're just gonna click on I accept the terms and conditions and then click on the install button. Now just wait until this is finished. There you go. It says here that you need to restart the computer, but you can do that later. Click on close. And now we're gonna install 7-zip. We're gonna do the same thing. Double click on the 7-z file and this window will pop up. And all you gotta do is just click here on the install button. Wait a few moments and there you go. It is installed. Click on close. And now the icon of Shed PS4 should be looking like this for you now. At this point, you can delete the 7-z and VC++ file. We're not gonna need this anymore. Now with the emulator file, what you're gonna do here is click on it with the right button. And on this window, you're gonna put your mouse on top of 7-zip. And then you're gonna select the option that says extract to and then the name of the emulator so that all the files will be inside a folder. When it's done, you're gonna see this folder with you. And from here, you can delete the original zip file. We're not gonna need that anymore. We're gonna start by double clicking on this folder now. Now this is what the emulator folder should look like for you. And before starting the emulator itself, we're gonna create a folder here to place the game files. So what you're gonna do is anywhere on this folder, you're gonna click with the right button. And on this window, put your mouse on top of new right here on the bottom and then click on folder. And you can name this whatever you want. In my case, I'm just gonna call this Bloodborne so that I know where the game files are going to. So now you're gonna start by double clicking the Shed PS4 application. So go ahead and do that. And as soon as it starts, it's gonna ask you the directory to install the games, which is that Bloodborne folder we came up with. So you're gonna click on this browse button, which should open the emulator folder by default. And then you're gonna click on the Bloodborne folder once, and then right here on the bottom, click on select folder. 
and there you go you don't have to click on the dlc location here just go ahead and click on ok and like that the emulator will pop up this would be a good time to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video so now in here we're gonna change a few of the emulator settings so click here on this button on the top and on the first tab general just make sure that the update channel is set to nightly it should already be so that you get the latest updates for the emulator and also click on enable check for updates at startup now move over to the graphics tab and there's this setting here called v blank divider and by default it should already be set to one and this is for playing the game at 30 or 60 fps but if you're planning to play this at 120 fps if your pc can support that of course then you're gonna set this to number two so i'm just gonna keep mine here at number one now go to the input tab and disable the enable motion controls setting because this can randomly trigger the emotes in the game especially if you're playing the game with the 60 fps patch and also just to be sure go to the graphics tab again and on graphics device make sure that you set your main gpu in case you have two gpus showing up in here like the integrated graphics card of the cpu for example now right next to the settings icon you're gonna click on the controller icon and at this point on the emulator we have the option to remap the controls and this emulator supports pretty much all the playstation and xbox controller and even third-party controllers as well if they have one of the supported apis and now it is also possible to play with your keyboard and mouse and if you want to check or remap the inputs you're gonna click here on kbm editor and you can see right here what the inputs are set by default so you're just gonna click on the one you want to change and then click on the save button when you're done click on apply and then save as well now to add the game on the emulator i'm gonna go back to the emulator folder and this is where i'm gonna drop the game files that i have with me they don't necessarily need to be in this folder now i'm just doing it this way to show you what they look like and the best way to get the game and the update file on your PC is by ripping a copy of the game that you might have to get these files in here. But you can also do a Jack Sparrow on the internet if you know what I mean. But this is something that I can't do here on the video because it is basically piracy and YouTube is very strict about this sort of thing. If you do that, they will delete the video and strike your channel. So the best thing that I can say without getting in trouble is that Google is your friend. So when you have the files with you, you're going to go back to the emulator. You're going to click on where it says file and then you're going to click on install packages. It should open the emulator folder by default. So now you're going to navigate to the location where the PKG of the games are and you're gonna first install the game and then the update. Do not install both of them at the same time because then you're gonna get a arrow on the emulator so i'm gonna start with bloodborne i have the game of the year edition with me and by the way regardless if you have the game of the year or the vanilla version you're also gonna need the 1.09 update but anyway i'm gonna start by installing the game double click on the pkg and then this window will pop up click on ok and then just wait until it is extracting the pkg and this will likely take a few minutes to complete when it's done you're gonna see this window click on ok and then you're gonna see the game showing up here now you're gonna do the same thing but for the update click on file install packages locate the update folder and double click on that and install again this one is gonna be much faster on this window here click on yes it'll only take a few seconds and there you go and if you did it right, you're going to see here version 1.09. Now is the time to activate the patches. And I'm also going to show you how to use cheats as well if you want to do that. So on the game, you're going to click on it with the right button. On this window, click on cheats, patches. And there you go. You're going to see this window. And for cheats, it's going to be empty just like the patches. And what you're going to do here is on the bottom, you're going to click on Wolf 2022 and change this to Shed PS4. And then you're going to click on download cheats 
you will see this window, click on OK, and then the cheats will appear. But to use cheats on the emulator, first you need to have the game running. You can see right here, if I try to turn on this cheat, it's gonna tell me that. Can't apply cheats before the game is started. So once you have the game running, you're gonna come back here and turn the one you want. Now, moving on to the patches tab, we're gonna do the same thing. On the bottom, click on gold hand and change this to shad PS4 and then download patches. And you're gonna see the list of patches available. And the patches I'm gonna recommend you to use are skip intro so that you get faster startups, disable chromatic aberration and disable motion blur. Scrolling down a little bit, enable the 60 FPS with a delta time patch. This is for playing the game at 60 or 120 FPS. If you set the V-Blank divider to 2 like I showed you before, then you're gonna play at 120 with this patch on. Also click on Enable Old Hunters DLC and Disable V-Sync. Now if you scroll down a bit more, you're gonna see the resolution patches for this game. And by default on the emulator, the game runs at 1080p resolution just like it is on the PS4. That is why you're not seeing a option for that in here. And on the emulator, even if you have a really good GPU, it is not recommended to increase the resolution to anything beyond 1080p. That is because if you do that, you're gonna have issues like the game crashing when you're taking or dealing damage, invisible enemies, and also the geometry of the game just being broken overall. So keep it to 1080p. But in case the performance of the game is not good for you, then you can reduce the resolution to something like 720p or even below that. Just make sure you only have one of the resolution patches enabled here. When you're done, click on save and select OK. After you get the game on the emulator, you can delete the PKG of the game and the update. But I would advise you to do this after you start the game and if everything is running fine. Just in case if you have a big issue where you have to redo the whole setup process again. Now for adding the mods, I'm also going to drop the files on the same emulator folder we have been using all this time and I'm going to explain what you need to know about them. These mods often have copyrighted material in them, so it is the same situation as the game files themselves. I cannot show on the video where to go to get them, but I can give you the names and where to find them. So the first quote unquote mandatory mod is Vertex Explosion Fix. You should use this one regardless of your setup. Now, if you have a NVIDIA GPU from the 1000 series or below that, you're also gonna need the Bloodborne Bright Object Flash Fix. And if you have a Intel CPU from one of the generations that I'm showing on the screen right now, you're also gonna need the PCSFX Fix All Effects No Crashes for Intel. These are the names for all three mods. I'm gonna use the Vertex Explosion Fix as an example. If you have 7-Zip with you, you can just double click on the file and it's gonna open this window. All three mods have similar file structure, which starts by having this folder here, the DVD root PS4. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna double click on the DVD root folder and then you're gonna have the folder with the actual mod. And the location of where this mod will go is right here. Back on the emulator folder, you're gonna double click the folder where your game file is and you should have a folder like this one. Double click on that. And inside, you're gonna double click on the same DVD root folder. And there you go, this is the place. Now you go back to the mod file and all you have to do is just drag and drop this folder into this one. So press and hold, bring it here and it's gonna ask you if you want to replace the file, click on replace, the file's in the destination, wait for it to finish, and there you go. So in case you're gonna need the other mods, you just have to do the same thing, the DVD root folder, and then drag all the files that you have inside to the DVD root folder on the emulator. Now this next step might come across as weird, but the next thing we're gonna get is the new mod manager for Bloodborne. And the reason for doing this is because this manager comes with a fix for the missing sound issue that the emulator has when you're playing at 60 FPS. I'm showing the name on the screen right now, so go ahead and grab it and you're gonna drop it on the emulator folder. 
Okay, so I have the file with me and you're going to extract this by right clicking the file, select 7-zip and then extract to BB launcher. Now you're going to have this folder with you. Double click on that and you're going to see the mod files. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take this BB launcher application and you're going to put this back on the emulator folder. And you can do this by clicking and hold the file. And then you're just going to drag to your shed PS4 file and then let go of the button. Now you go back to the main folder and you're going to start by double clicking on the application. This window will pop up for you and the first thing you're going to do is select the install folder for the game. So click on the browse button. It should open the emulator folder by default. So now you're going to double click on the game folder and then you're going to select this folder right here. It should even have the same name as the one I have here. Now click on select folder and there you go. If you click on the BB launcher settings option, you're going to see that the 60 FPS sound fix is already enabled by default. And there are some other settings you can change if you want, even the remapping controls of the emulator and also the patches too. And you might be wondering why we didn't use the manager before to install the mods. And that is because I think it's less complicated to just drop the mod files we need on the emulator folder instead of using the manager here. But at this point, you can use this manager to install even more mods that you might be interested in. But we need it now anyway for the sound fix. Now we are ready to start the game. And keep in mind that whenever you want to play the game, you have to do it through the manager now so that the 60 FPS sound fix is working. So all you gotta do now is click on the launch button. Be aware that it might take a little while for the game to start for your first time. It might even look like the emulator is about to crash or something, but don't worry, that's normal. Just wait until it goes through. Also, when you use the manager, there is no way to activate the cheats. So if you want to play with that, you have to open the game through the Shad PS4 emulator. But that way, you won't have the 60 FPS sound fix. To go full screen, press F11 on your keyboard. I have many emulation tutorial videos like this on the channel, so if you like what you saw, don't forget to check out my other stuff, subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.